Okay, so we've resawed our wax and it's relatively thin. And as with a good demonstration, nothing goes perfectly, which is great because it shows you how to troubleshoot weird variances in thickness. So you can see from the edge, um, let's grab my little pokey tool. Here we have a nick where the saw didn't recut uniformly. And that led to this surface being raised and this surface here is slightly thinner than this surface here, and uh, then there's this gouge. So we want to get all that down to flat. And there's a couple ways to do it, um, all of which are relatively cheap, effective, and readily available. Um, it really depends on what you've got and how you choose to address it. You can very easily just lay this down and carve it all flat by eye, like no problem there. Okay. We know how to carve. We know how the spoonie tool works. And that shaving down that ridge line is not an issue, especially if you plan on hollowing out this perimeter. Um, but I want to cover a couple of other options uh, in case anyone has this equipment available. Um, one thing you want to be aware of is we did just polish this surface, so we don't want to press hard into a surface um, when we're doing all the carving on the back side. But if you have a file and you want to file your material flat, I'm just holding the file and pulling the wax along. And that'll get you to a flat planar surface very easily. Okay, But again, it's wax, so you don't get to do this quickly because it's just going to melt and it'll clog your file. But you can see how that just shaves your material down nice and uniformly. So you can sit there. And file, and uh, you can flip, use the other side, and then once you've kind of filled the file with little fuzzies, take the time to set your wax down. And, you know, just a used toothbrush is a great thing. It just cleans so much stuff. Usually the bristles are floppy enough to do what you need, but not so floppy that uh, they don't do anything at all. So from there, you can just go back to filing. Or on the off chance that you don't have a large file around, and um, you know, a used file works great. You can get them at the, the hardware store, woodworker store. Uh, rasps work too. Um, but used ones, if you know people who do metal work or woodwork and they have files that they're not thrilled with, they're going to work great for the wax. You know, a really sharp file will do wonders on wax, but uh, a dull file is going to cut it just fine because it's so soft. So that's that's close. That's one method. Right? And then the other method is a simple uh, sandpaper. You can get this anywhere. Um, I think this is 180 grit. Right here in the perimeter, it's still got a 1.8, but uh, yeah, sandpaper works great. And you just kind of sit there and massage your wax to get it back to flat. If for some reason you've carved it and you don't like what you've done and you want to erase it and start fresh with a completely blank slate, sandpaper works fine. And it's just rotating it back and forth. Right? Uh, some people like to do figure eights. <clears throat> some people like to do circles. Some people like to do circles and figure eights. If you talk to cold workers, those are people who polish glass. They usually have a mechanism that works really well to prevent fatigue when they're polishing. Um, but if you do too much of one motion, you'll find your hands getting tired. So switch it up and do something else just so your hand isn't going completely insane. And you'll notice this gives a slightly different texture on the back, but it still works. And you can use the toothbrush to clean out the sandpaper as well. Okay. Simple fixes. Okay. But that's all that's necessary when you're doing the flat, planar bits, right? You just need a piece of sandpaper and a flat surface or a file big enough to hold your wax. Okay, and then at this point, we're starting to get thin enough to where we'll see light transmission. And so we'll talk about um, carving details later.